prior to applying to Oxford Cambridge, you're probably thinking 9A stars is something that's amazing. I'm a champion. Guys, kiss my hand. It doesn't work like that. Then 4A star predictions. Okay. <laughs> Leave a thumb. Start here to collect that YouTube AdSense and to get that watch time up so I can start earning money on YouTube. So hopefully today I'm going to show you what BMAT scores you need to get into Oxford. Also a side benefit, you don't even need the BMAT to get into Oxford to become a doctor. There's another way of doing it. People don't know about this or people do know but they don't really think about this. The way of doing it is, to, for example, do an engineering course, then do a master's, and then do a doctorate. Subhanallah. Therefore, you have graduated as a doctor at Oxford. You just need to think about it very smartly. So, guys, let's get straight into the video because that's what you're here for. My friend said that, you know, what I should say is that YouTube freezes my video, like, if you don't really subscribe and like, so hopefully today 50 likes if we can. So enough of wasting your time, let's get straight onto it. And I know I'll be messing around a little bit too much, but I'm gonna stop. A100 BMAT scores, application undergraduate medicine, that's what A100 sort of stands for. 2019, deferred entry, it's basically that cycle, so it's 2018 to 2019, because our results this year will only be published for those who are applying for the 2021 cycle. Now guys, I sort of forgot to tell you that inside the description box there's timestamps or probably in the comments as well. So skip to the part that you find most relevant. I don't want to waste any more of your time. Just do what you need to, just like the video as well. 171 applicants received an offer to study medicine in 2019. Um, this is sort of like waffle, but essentially the way that Oxford does it, it's 50% based on the number of A stars that you got, also 50% based on the contextualized or no, the contextualized GCC offers and the BMAT score, which is another 50%. Now, what this is is your contextualized GCC score, depending on the secondary school that you went to. I'm speaking quite fast because sometimes I'm told I speak quite slowly, so hopefully, this sort of helps. Now, if you went to a really bad school, what will happen is that you'll get like positive points from what I can see and if you go to a really really good school you'll get negative scores um, and essentially that's the way they do it it's ordered in modulus so essentially 0 0.5 would be the same in order as 0 minus 0 0.5 just in case you're a little bit confused why it's like that now BMAT scores and I put a few notes there just so I can help you guys out as well. Now from here we can see that there's three sections of the BMAT which is a standard. Uh, I'm presuming you know that, if not I'll probably link something inside the description box so you know what I'm talking about. Um, section 1, Section 2, Section 3. Section 3 is out of 1 to 5 and um, the grammar score is not listed here. Usually, typically it is. And Section 1 and Section 2 is graded out of 9. Usually people never get 9, just to show you the people who apply to Oxford, I'm going to type 9 in there, 9 point something, um, 9 point zero, it doesn't come up. And if I was to type 9, and I'm going down, you don't see a single 9 by itself, um, and that just emphasizes my point. Whereas 8, a score of 8, 8.5 is something that is achieved, like, I know it seems impossible, but it says over there. One of seven results, 8.6, section two, 8.6, 8.6, 8 um, 8.6, 8.5. So primarily people tend to do better in section two, primarily because it's like GCSE content and you're less likely to make a mistake and you're more rushed for time than more than anything. But just to run you a few, some of the results, if I was to zoom in right now, um, you'd be able to see that of those that applied, Right now, if you're looking at the screen, this person probably did not get in, this person did probably did not get in as well. Um, one thing that I would advise, and I put it here so that people know, is to get a score of 5.6 to 5.8, like minimum, average. So I'm talking about on those two sections. Now the third section isn't given that much importance. I'm talking about like if you score higher than like 2.5. Yes, it is important and the better you score, obviously the better it help you out, but it is nowhere as near important as section one and two. And that's the same for like um, Imperial as well. So I explained that in the other video, probably linked 
down in the description box. Now if you're asking what is the average of those that applied, it's probably going to be 4.9. Um, but do remember a lot of people do apply and don't get in with Oxford it's very it's a sticky one so it's not the same as Cambridge whereby they accept or bring into the interview 75% of those that applied it's nowhere near the same with Oxford if you're invited to interview they probably really like your application and I think it's like 30% of the applicants that do get invited to interview so if you do get invited that's a very very good sign now if you're thinking how do I have access to these sheets um, what do they know about you having this? Um, when you clock what I've said and you find it, I told you. Um, so yeah, let's carry on. So right now you can see that's just one section of the results. Now I'm gonna go down to 2018, I believe. So this is the guide A100 again, 2018 applicants, BMAT scores, total marks, everything. Now this is probably the section that people would be most shocked. The reason why I'm saying this is Prior to applying to Oxford Cambridge, you're probably thinking 9A stars is something that's amazing. I'm a champion. Guys, kiss my hand. It doesn't work like that. When you're applying to Oxford and Cambridge, expect people to be getting 11, 12, 13 A stars, 14 A stars, and that's like the standard. Um, yes, you can still get in with 9, 8, 6, but it's very, very difficult, and I'll show you the percentage breakdown in a bit. But just to show you the number of applicants, GCSE A star grades. 12, 11, 10, 13, 8, 10, 7, 11, 11, 11, 10, that's a lot, 14, was that 14? Um, no, no, wait, yes, 14, 14 A stars, absolute bang out, absolute bang out, um, but that's just to show you the caliber of your competition that's available at Oxford, so bear that in mind, don't act smug, go into the interview, trying your hardest. That's the standard cliche advice that everyone gives. Now, A-level predicted grades you can probably see from here already. Now, don't be surprised because this is how it is. So, guys, go check it out. Right now, you can see two A-stars and A, standard, three A-star predictions. Look how many there is. That's absolutely ridiculous. Three A-stars three a and an A, all of this. Um, yeah, and it stops there. Then four A-star predictions. That's like a standard, I'm telling you. It's honestly like a standard. Um, five A-star predictions. These guys are beasts. But this is, again, not to flex on you and saying that, oh, you're rubbish and to demotivate you. This is to show you your calibre. Now, don't be someone who's complacent and says, oh, I can't fix that. Um, that means I can't apply to Cambridge and all that. Shush. You can apply. You just need to smash your BMAT exam. Now, BMAT data as well. Um, I don't know exactly how they calculated this BMAT total score, but if you do know, um, this will give you an indication where you find out later on you've searched it up yourself. 94.6, I'm not sure if that's high. Now right now, if we check out the A stars at GCSE as well as percentages that come along with them, we can see that 8 A stars, 5% of all the offers given out were to 8 A stars, that's a lot of A stars as it is, 12 A stars, that's 12 percent okay 11 30 10 30 so if it would be bimodal it'd be both of them 10 and or 11 and 12 which just shows your caliber of competition i know there's nothing that you can do about it right now but take this as a massive motivation to absolutely smash your beamer now if you're thinking is oxford a good university to go to yes it is but for me personally the mandatory intercalation, which is essentially an extra year of your life that gets slapped onto your medicine course, it isn't long enough as it is already, but they slap one year onto it, so essentially you're forced to do six years instead of five. Where with other unis, you can choose to do five or you can choose to do six. This uni doesn't let you, so that's one thing. The other thing is that Oxford, Ox is an animal, Ford is a brand car, it's not Ox Mercedes, and um, like you know ox rhymes with fox and there's foxes that surround my house so you understand what i'm trying to say now another reason is that also the maintenance cost living outside london because obviously i live in london it's going to be tremendous and i'm just not ready to be able to pay that off it's just another hassle to do so and i know some people are like yeah take the loan man i'm like no because yeah you're, you're going to end up paying that back as it is and uh if you're islamically speaking that's a different story as well now one other thing is the dietary requirements as me being a muslim um, obviously I can survive on vegetables but me I don't want to 
essentially adopt the lifestyle of a rabbit so you know I like to have a little bit of meat and I know some of the stores are gonna be halal but inside the campus I heard that some like it's a major restriction it's not like London so it's gonna be a little bit difficult for me to do what I want and eat the foods that I want as well that's a personal reason that's not really a reason to stop me from going to Oxford but now if I'm coming across a little bit arrogant as if like I'm some sort of big-headed person it's probably because it's 1.40 at night time and I want to go sleep but I do so you know bear with me now another reason is the ISOC at Oxford I'm not saying that it's non-existent I'm not saying that it's rubbish me personally I just prefer something um, a little bit stronger so um, QM Kings that's where I've applied to this break of personality that you see if you go check out my old old videos you'll be surprised but anyway guys if you haven't leave the like um, please leave a like because it really really helps 50 likes would help me so so much now on top of that guys if you're here until the end of the video one thing I would say is that you can enter into the giveaway which is one free copy of my ebook if you just text I want the ebook in the what you call it description box and hopefully we'll see just give it variations give it your own twist before you know YouTube thinks it's some sort of robot and they suspend the account so guys catch you in the Cambridge video and um, yeah so catch you guys in a